All right, so starting from the top here, um, going through the uh, some of the fields that we're using. Uh, so first off, we grab the player, uh, the host name, so home server name, and then the attack delay, so the time between the attacks. So if you remember uh, our diagram here, each of these scripts need to happen uh, 50 milliseconds one after the other. Um, and then we have our uh, usual virus uh, information, so the, the virus name and then the virus RAM. And then a mapping on the actions um, and then the different cracking scripts that we have. Um, so all of those are being used by the helper functions below. And then scrolling down to the main logic of uh, this application, I'm, I'm going to go through the first the entire logic. And then um, I'm going to do a deep dive on, uh, I guess, what each of these individual functions work. Um, so going through the high level of this. Uh, so first we grab the ships um, from our server. So ships are all the servers that we can control, meaning that we can run the, uh, the pirate script. And then we print out the available ships. So we just grab the length. Uh, and then we want to make sure that we exit early if there's no available ships because there's no point in doing any of these uh, checks or logic uh, if there's no ships to uh, actually allocate. Uh, and then for every ship here, we then write it to our report. So I, um, I use the attack report as a way to debug things, um, but I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, but uh, in the future, I want to extend it so that it has a much better, I guess, uh, reporting system. Um, but for now, I'm just putting this, leaving this here as a placeholder uh, for what's to come. Uh, and then after we grab all the ships and print out whatever is uh, all our ship information, um, we then grab the potential targets. And if you remember, um, this get potential targets come from the find targets uh script so uh, what this does is that it returns all the list of servers that we can hack in uh, but then orders them in um, its revenue yield and then moving down here so for every target we grab the target's name um, we then allocate uh resources so meaning that so the first thing we need to do is gather the requirements so what this get requirements does is that it grabs, uh, I guess, information about the delays for the hack, weaken, and grow scripts, uh, the maximum number th of threads this target node needs, um, as well as the strategy, so the sequence of these hack, grow, and um, weaken scripts. Uh, moving down here to uh, creating the fleets, so after we retrieve the requirements, we then create the fleets uh, using that requirements. So what this create fleets function does is that it looks at the requirements and then looks at all the, the, the ships available to us and then it groups them into organized fleets. So fleets represent uh, an action uh, on the sequence and then uh, it has a group of servers that can execute that action. Uh, and then we also return uh, an assigned here, so all the assigned ships, just so that we can delete them from our uh, roster, so our, our available ships, uh, so that we don't um, reallocate them in the future. Um, so after retrieving all the fleets, we then also set sail, so meaning that we run the exit command. Um, so here you, you could see that I pass in a whole bunch of arguments, uh, but the, the key thing here is this PID here. Uh, so uh, whenever you run an active script, so let's have a look at here, um, it treats this entire thing as its own unique identifier. It doesn't just treat the, just the script name as a unique identifier it needs to be it treats the whole thing as um i guess uh, a, a script running uh if we look at a server that's running multiple threads so for example comtech um if we don't have this pid here uh, the exit command would report that um this script is already running because there's nothing unique between this and this um so just to make sure that we can allocate uh, resources uh, effectively, we add this PID 
uh, just so that if we are uh, this server is already targeting uh, that um, I guess this server um, then we can uh, run another script that can run at another time and then uh, allocate different resources for that all right cool so that's that's what the PID does um, so this yeah so we I already talked about the updating the roster so deleting the uh, assigned ships from our list of ships um, and then we then check uh, how many ships are available so if there's no more ships available then we break out of this loop so we don't go over the, the next set of targets all right so starting from the top let's start with um, what this get ships does uh, so this one's pretty simple I think it's very similar to um, some of the algorithms that I've um, already made uh, so first we grab all the network nodes within uh, all the nodes within our network and then we filter them out um, based off the things that we can penetrate so uh, we have uh, enough penetration scripts to um, hack the node and gain root access uh, and then we it also has enough RAM to support the, the virus um, and then down here we then just prepare the server uh, meaning that we gain root access if it doesn't already and we also copy uh, this, uh, this the virus over to that server um, I want to make sure that Whatever comes out of this get ships com uh, this get ships function uh, is readily usable, so that's why I prepared this beforehand. And then down here, I create a hash map. Um, this hash map represents a the uh, server name mapped to the amount of RAM available inside it. Uh, so let's say that this uh, a single node um, is already running two threads worth of scripts, uh, but the maximum thread is ten. Uh, what this one will do is that it's going to map the server name uh, or the node name to uh, what, how, what, whatever's left over, so 8. Uh, it's going to do that for all the nodes that we can control. Um, so we, we can skip this, uh, mainly because this is just uh, logging logic. And then we already covered this, get potential targets. Uh, so we're going to move into this main loop. So how does, um, how does it allocate those resources? Uh, so going into this get requirements function so for get requirements we find three different aspects about the node so the first one is the strategy uh, which we've already covered so strategy uh, determines whether we're gonna flog the server so weaken it we're gonna nourish the server or grow it um, or we're gonna take money for it from it so plunder so this get strategy just returns uh, the type of uh, strategy it is the sequence of actions that it's going to execute and then the resource allocation between them and then moving down to the delays so this one is probably the key um, the key ingredient to making all of this work uh, so you you want to make sure that for every uh, for every action within the sequence you want to calculate the delays between them uh, this is kind of kind of hard to um, I guess visualize uh, actually what I did before I created this launch script is uh, that I created a test rig so this is implemented in HTML and um, it uses the canvas to just uh, allow me to easily visualize what I'm I'm doing um, I can't really do any math equations so I did what I do best and tried to draw pictures uh, so I'm just gonna uh, comment out quite a bunch of these uh, calculations here um, and then we'll start with a, a blank canvas um, just to walk you through my entire thought process in our uh, hacking uh, sequence we want to execute four actions we want to execute hack and then weaken and then grow and then weaken again meaning that we're supposed to create four lines um, how the algorithm starts is that it first defines a starting uh, point and this starting point is arbitrary so just imagine that this starting point is set to zero uh, and then from the starting point we then um, extract the other lines so the other ending times from that uh, so each of them represents um, when uh, an action within the sequence will finish so for the first line it's gonna uh, the hack will finish the second line the weaken will finish the third line the grow will finish and then so on 
And then down here, we then have a whole bunch of um, calculations on when these hack, grow, and weaken scripts. Uh, essentially, when we're drawing these uh, hack, grow, and weaken scripts, uh, we want to, I guess, try to find a way to make sure that um, this square here ends on the line. And how we calculate that is by moving the X coordinate back by the length of that action. So for example, for hack, uh, we, uh, so if, if we look at this, so we um, get the X coordinate of the first line and then we take away the, um, the amount of time the hack takes, so H, and then this calculates where this hack starts. And then we do that for every single one of these actions. Um, and then after calculating, uh, I guess, mapping out all of these uh, actions within um, these timings, we then calculate the uh, total amount of time. So from the, the start, so from, from here up to here. And how we uh, calculate that is by grabbing the minimum x coordinate so minim yeah minimum x coordinate of any of these actions and then finding the distance from that minimum x coordinate to the um to the coordinate of the the final line so the the ending point of the last sequence and then as soon as we find the full timing we can then find the delays between each of these actions so here's the delays. Essentially, each delay um, just calculates the distance between when the, I guess, the this full timing, the start of this full timing um, starts, and then when the uh, actual script uh, starts as well. What we're interested in here is are the x coordinates, how we calculate the x coordinates, because x coordinates represent the time. And uh, that's what we used for our uh, our uh, our get delay for action sequence script here. The first thing I do is grab the um, the time it takes for each action to complete, and we use that using the formulas uh, hacking uh, API. And then we map it to um, an object uh, just so that. Uh, if you remember, the R sequence are just a whole bunch of letters. So we want to map the letter to the actual timing, uh, just so that it's a lot easier to um, retrieve. And then we grab the base time. So for every base time, we so this is where we grab the starting points. Um, and then after that, we then calculate when these actions start. And then uh, we find the minimum from from all of these actions that uh, has started so t0 and then from from t0 we then calculate the delays for each action in this in the sequence all right and then the last thing um, that I want to go over is the max threads so max threads is a, a, a bit of a complicated one as well and what this re represents is the maximum amount of threads that's needed to execute um, a single action. So for example, uh, Grow has a thread requirement, Weaken has a thread requirement, and Hack has a thread requirement. For Grow, Netscript provides a function called Growth Analyze, which um, requires you to pass in a growth multiplier. Uh, so to calculate the growth multiplier, we uh, divide the money threshold by the current money and this uh, growth multiplier needs to be greater than one uh, the, the only scenario where um, this is uh, not e greater than or equal to one is when the current money exceeds our money threshold um, so that's that's what I do that's why I do this check um, and then I do another check here to, to handle the scenario where there's no money in the server. The reason is because if you put this in, this calculation in, this is going to return infinity. And um, since infinity is greater than one, it's going to go into this growth analyze and then growth analyze will throw an error. Uh, so we want to do this check. So if current money, there's no current money, we want to assign just a single thread to it. Uh, just to get uh, get the money rolling into this, that server, so just to revive it a little bit. 
Uh, the second thing is the weaken threads. So weaken uh, Netscript provides this function called weaken analyze, which calculates the weaken effect uh, for the number of threads that you pass it. So we just grab the effect for one thread. And then from the one thread, we then tried to find um, how many threads does it take to um, to actually weaken our se security to reach this security threshold. And then here, hack calculation. Uh, this one's a lot easier. So uh, Netscript provides this uh, command called hack analyze threads where you pass in the node and then the current money. Uh, the key thing here is that Hack Analyze only takes in um, up to how much money it is on within the server, meaning that what this uh, this hack threads represent is the number of threads required to steal all the money within the server. And then we put that into um, the a, a big object which uh, contains all that information and also adds up the, the total. Yeah, and then after calculating all those three items, we then uh, return that into one big object. All right, so that's that's the the third part of this video. Um, in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you guys how to use that requirement to create your fleets and then uh, launching them uh, as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one.